Ini the end of the video, my beloved girl Mango. She's around five, six years old. Look Change the way that you think about keeping your reptiles. Greetings fans. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a baby mangrove monitor enclosure. This video is full disclaimer. This is a bare minimum. I recommend bigger, but this is a bare minimum. This is what, if you're looking to get a mangrove, this is what the least thing you should be looking at. Also, if you're talking minimums, you probably shouldn't get a monitor, but I know there's a lot of people that already have monitors and I know there's a lot of people that are gonna get them regardless of this video or not. So if you take anything away from this video, then it's a bonus. I'm doing this for your lizard. Hope you enjoy. Quick disclaimer, this video gets a little bit ranty. I'm not attacking anyone. If you have a mangrove and it's not set up like I've just shown in this, well, I'm about to show in this video, don't stress, okay? It's not too late ever to grow, change and evolve. I think the most important thing we as keepers can do is realize that we're not giving our best and slowly work towards it. Rome wasn't built in a day. Even if just after this video you go, I'm gonna give some LEDs and black out the walls, great. That's amazing, okay? All I'm trying to do is promote good husbandry for mangrove monitors and monitors alike, but mainly mangrove monitors because they're my thing. I hope you enjoy the video. So this is a bare minimum for a mangrove monitor. This is realistic. Everyone can do this. It's cost me about 500 pound. So the Exoterra is second hand, but I've all the lights and everything in it is new. So I'm gonna do a bit on the lighting first and it's gonna blow your minds. So this is all your monitor. We'll see if all you use is a, is a halogen or an incandescent light and you're not using any LEDs or any UVB. This is literally all they'll see. And if you're using nothing but a deep heat projector, that's what they're gonna see. I've done this deliberately at night, so obviously you'd have natural daylight, but that's it. So this is what I see a lot of enclosures looking like. It's just this, just a minimum. Now, some people, they couple them with like a UVB, which I believe is this one. No, nope. which I believe is this one. Okay, so we're a bit more, we're a bit more bright now. We've got a little bit more light going on. The UVB's in, the halogen's on. Looks great. And some people I see, they have like an LED or a um, like a UVB next to it. So one area is incredibly bright, but then look how dark this area here is. So your lizards aren't, for an animal that spends all its time out in the day, and for an animal that uses its sight to hunt, and for an animal that's just been taken from the wild, this is so dark. So if we turn the LED spot back off, and we put the LED and we put the UVB back on. Again, this is a minimum that people see all the time. If we add an LED bar, instantaneously, look at that. I've got a couple of shady patches, which I'm, I've spoke about at some point in this video before or after this, which is important to get away from the UVI. And then if we couple that with the LED spot, and if I jump up here and reorganize it, because it all fell down whilst I was trying to do this video for you, what we have is we have bright 6,500 Kelvin lights illuminating the halogen. So you've got the 2,500 Kelvin of the halogen, the 4,000 Kelvin, Kelvin of the LED, and the 6,000 Kelvin of the bar, and the 6,500 Kelvin of the spot, giving you the closest similar match to daylight. How much better does that look than what just the halogen look like? For an animal that's constantly running around during the day, this is the least we can do, especially for wild caught animals, but all animals, to give them this kind of lighting rig as an absolute minimum. And if you're not looking at that now going, oh God, my enclosures are pitch black dark, then I don't really know what's going on because this for me is an absolute minimum lighting. So this, now we've touched on the lighting, we'll do a quick overview of the setup. Like I say, this is a bare minimum. If anything, you wanna go to four by two by two and have it slightly bigger and a few more cork branches, but I've had them now for a couple of months. I've had them since December. So I've had that, actually had them nearly four months. 
With a wild caught import, you want to just put them straight into something fully dense, fully planted, fully bioactive. I will show you in just a second. Actually, I'll show you now so you understand. So this viv is currently housing my young female tree monitor. But something like this is what I use to acclimatize your mangroves to captivity. Dense, plenty of highs, plenty of darkness. This, this was what I used for my peach fruit. For, I just use it for a couple of months, just so then you know that they're secure, they've got correct lighting, they've got correct heating, and they're feeding. Obviously this is hard to keep, a, keep an eye on them, and we'll go back to the other setup in a moment, but if you're worried about keeping an eye on them, don't put them in an empty viv because you're just going to stress them and stress is your enemy when it comes to fresh imports so something like this or as a worst case something like what i've got but i'll explain what i mean is where you want to set them up for a few months and just don't touch them just leave them be and then hopefully they acclimatize they hydrate they get used to being in a box and then you can work with them so now that we've gone over where you should have them for the first few months if you want to socialize them, you can put them into something like this. I mean, you can put them into something like this as soon as you get them. A big live plant in the middle here and another cork tube there wouldn't go amiss. But like I say, I'm trying to now socialize this one that I've got in there. So this is my this is my minimum enclosure. I again would use a four by two by two, but I'm doing this so I can sort of teach and show people how the Exoterra works as much as I don't, I don't disagree with it. Obviously I wouldn't be doing it, but again, this is, what most people are going to be buying. So what you want is cork tubes. Cork tubes facing out and with like holes in them so the animals can feel secure, but also hide in there so you can see them and they can see you so they feel a bit more secure. Also, I'm going to touch on it in a minute, but substrate. Do not have empty enclosures with shallow substrate. These guys are for as babies. They love living underground. They dig a lot. I will show you in a moment on my other view for my juveniles which is a lot better set up. In here, I've just got some Eco Earth, some Play Sand, and I've got like the Arcadia Bio Mix because I've put some live plants in there and that's going to give them nutrients and charcoal and other stuff like that. Blacked out walls. Don't have an exoterra with no climbable wall. Climbable walls, one, they can see out, it's going to stress them. They're going to freak. They're going to be like, oh my God, they can't perceive the glass. Two, all of this is now surface area. They can climb. I've just used like fiber board so the plants will climb up it. Eventually this viv will be repurposed as a hatchling viv for some baby or datria, or maybe even hatching mangroves if and when I ever get some. And then a few branches, water bowl, simplistic. I'm pretty sure I've already got a clip that I've already done on temperature and UVI. So we'll go over that in a, in, in a bit in the video. This is it, just leave them be. As you can see, there is a mangrove in here, but you can't see the mangrove. This is what keeping mangroves is like. This is for the most part. Don't go, oh, where's my mangrove and dig the bit. Just leave them. And when they come out, don't go, oh, my mangrove. Because they will just run away and they'll just be scared. Just leave them. They need to establish time in captivity. <laughs> will Exotic said, if you've been snatched from your home and thrown in an empty box, you're going to be miserable. But if you're snatched from your home and thrown into a lovely mansion with all the food and all the climbing space, that you could ever dream of. You're still gonna be pissed, but you're gonna be a lot less pissed. Think about your animals and think about what they want and their needs and try and set the setup up according. Again, this for me is, this is a very bare minimum enclosure for me and I'm only doing this so you guys can have like a start, a benchmark. I don't wanna be seeing mangroves really unless 36 long, 24 tall, 18 deep, for a mangrove that's about this big. If it shows up at some point before I finish this video, I'll try and get a video of it. But the chances are, this is how it will stay for the rest of like the week because they pop out now and then, they do their things, I'm normally at work. Why you should always invest in a camera so you can monitor your animal and see what they're doing. I don't know what's in the next segment, but we're about to find out. As you can see, my basking spot just under is around the three to four in UVI. And then if you go down onto the bottom of the viv, we've got like a whole range of magnitude, depending sort of where we are. As you can see, we've got around three to four. I also forgot to mention that it's very important to have places of incredibly low to no UVI. So you don't want UVI everywhere. So obviously in here, no UVI. Where they burrow, no UVI. 
down here shade you know so make sure you give shade as much as you give light at the same time so all these cork tubes and these burrows and these hides will give them the shade that they need like you can see in that back corner and now we're basking i'm learning new stuff so i'm learning that basically it's it's due to like a power unit of i'll explain this in another video but long story short you want to put your hand there and you want to feel a warm glow you don't want it to be hot, you don't want it to be intense, but instantaneously just a warm glow, which I can feel, which is good. But I put a basking spot of anywhere between 45, I give them a, a gradient of anywhere between 45 and 55. But cork isn't a true measure. So when you see it say 60 there, I'm not particularly worried about that. 60 is 135. I'm not I'm not worried about it saying that because cork it reads it's not true. So there's normally like five or so degrees like cooler. But if you like here, for example, that's incredibly hot for me. That's hot. But here's just a nice warm glow. So we're about to touch on how to make sure that your soil's correct, because again, these guys love to burrow. I'm gonna show you in this one because it's my best example. I haven't sprayed this enclosure in about three days. See that? See the way that this is holding a burrow? Just dig down. You want the sand to clump, but no water to come out of it. This will hold a burrow. These guys live in burrows. I left food out for them this morning. There's some egg, prawns, and uh, carb chick. This isn't really a care guide, but we might as well touch on humidity as we've done temps and everything else. You probably notice in the soil that the top layer is quite dry. And then the lower you get, the more humid it becomes. That's why the burrows are so key, because they're the microclimate. So even if your humidity is sitting at 55, 60% in the viv, that's fine because they have these microclimates as well as big water bowls, which they can fully get in, which will allow them to reach 90 to 100% humidity. As regards to spraying, I spray three to four times a week, depending. I season them, but this is irrelevant. You want to keep the humidity around 60 to 70% right around there. If it drops a bit below or spikes a bit above, it's fine. When you spray it, it's gonna spike. Let it dry, let the whole viv dry out. You do not want them solely wet. People think, oh, mangrove swamps, yes. But they also have completely dry areas in the wild. You want areas where the substrate's dry and you want, well, you want the whole viv to have sub dry substrate. And then you want the big water bowls and the burrows that are gonna hold humidity. Do not put your wild caught animals in empty enclosures. Like if you put an animal in something, like, there's nothing in here. If you put an animal in something like this, just a basking spot, one a hide and a branches, no. That is just going to increase the stress and increase the parasitic load. Just leave them. Put them in here, leave them. This is a minimum enclosure. But this sort of size enclosure will work for a baby. But you have to deck it out. And then after two, three, four months of your animal being in there it's eating you've seen poo everything's good then you can start to take a few bits out until you're to this level but this is a minimum you don't want to take it any less than this you don't want any less than this this still gives the animal chance to hide if it wants to feel safe as well as still opportunities for you to see it you probably notice that this video is incredibly lacking in mangroves because this is what you get when you keep mangroves this so there's two mangroves in here that are like 20 inches. Where are they? They hide. It's what mangroves Until do. they get to adulthood when they actually stay out. And then even then, they try and kill you every chance they can get. You know? Now here is another one of my juveniles, my smallest one. This is a perfect example of the cork tube method. And it's just hiding in the cork tube. So it can see me, and I can see it, whilst I'm pissing it off with a phone torch. But this is it, this is what you get. <laughs> like, they see me, they run to the cork tubes. That is what keeping mangroves is. Like, if you're expecting this thing to come out, eventually this animal will change. And eventually it'll be like, okay, I'm not scared of this man anymore. Then I can start to tongue feed it and I can start to build its trust. That might take two more months. That might take two more years. I've had Mango here for three years and she still hates my guts. But as you can see, I'm right in her face and she doesn't particularly care. And she only really charges for food. 
So this is good. This is what you'd expect from a mangrove monitor. If your captor's scared of you, then obviously it's, it's, it's existence in captivity is just going to be super stressful. So you don't want your animals to be scared of you, but it does, you can't expect them tomorrow to be like, oh, cool. It takes time. They they do eventually come around, but they're, you have to wait for the day when they realise, oh, okay, you're not a predator. You're not trying to kill me. You have to be patient with them. You can't go in there and grab them. You can't go in there and force handle them. You just have to... Oh, I'm covering my phone. Just have to leave them be. Just leave leave them be. And if it takes six months before you even get to see them out, it changes. My, I had it with my peach. It took five months for my peach throat to be happy enough to stay out in front of me whilst I was in the room. But that's five months of leaving it alone. Do not force handle your animals. Leave them alone. Once they're happy to stay out in your presence and they will tongue feed, you can start to build the relationship. You can start to lure them up onto your hand for food, and lure them, but like in the enclosure, do it in the enclosure. So to get them to come onto your hand for food. As soon as they touch your hand, don't be like, oh, as soon as they touch your hand, feed them, positive reinforcement. And then every time they tongue feed, 10 out of 10 times, come to your hand 10 out of 10 times. Then once you've done that, then you can start luring them up your arm because they're used to this. This is their home. They've been ripped from the wild now they're in here, they're used to this. So you have to get them used to you in their surroundings. Make sense? I know I'm super passionate in this video, like it seems like I'm preaching, because I am. I love these guys. And so many times I see mangroves in such rubbish conditions. <sighs> Please, minimum, I've shown you the minimum. If you can't do that, you can't have a mangrove. I'm sorry, that's the minimum. And if this video hasn't changed your mind, in the sense of the lighting, mangroves aren't for you. They're not for you. I don't know what more I can say. I will be doing a full care guide on mangroves from start to finish. There is a podcast style, an old one on my channel, but I know a lot more now than I did then. I'm gonna do a long care guide video on these guys. This isn't really a care guide. This is a bare minimum introductory this is how you set up the enclosure i think i've covered enough points as a bare minimum just a standpoint this is the sort of video you want to watch my phone's on low battery this is the sort of video you want to watch if you're thinking about getting one if you've got one this is still for you you can still change your enclosure to this because this is the bare minimum type of enclosure that you agree got. there has to be a balance but you can't prioritize yourself and your wants and your needs to hold and pet and play with this animal it's not fair a minimalistic enclosure, which is still decked out, still got full lighting, still got climbable walls. Your animal can eventually learn to trust you and then your relationship will be built so much better rather than just being like grabbing it, force handling it, making it do stuff it doesn't want to do and it learning that you're not a friend and eventually it's spirit will break and you'll perceive it as tame when in fact it's just scared or exhausted. It's not the one. Like I say, I brought this to show you guys the bare minimum that I would recommend for a mangrove. I've said my honest opinion, I would rather it in a 4x2x2, by two by two, and I would. But this will work. If you cannot achieve this, then I don't think you can have a mangrove. You know, like, you could even go taller, they will use the height. I see people putting their animals in enclosures with no soil, no hides, and then just making them interact with them. Just not, it is not the way. A smaller enclosure I can understand, but still allowing your animal to have places to run and hide, that's a minimum. See if your animal's wild caught. If you've got a wild caught animal and you're putting it in an empty enclosure with no lights, it's cruel. I don't care what you say, it's cruel. A small enclosure is okay, as long as it's fully decked out properly and you're meeting all the animal's needs and requirements, you know? Please, <laughs> don't put your animals in empty enclosures just to socialize them. Stop being selfish with herpetoculture. If you never see your animal, this is a video about mangroves and there's no mangroves in it because that is what mangroves are. You have to wait until they get bigger. And the problem is when they're bigger, they're a bit more spunky and a bit more lively and a bit more bitey. And then people are scared of them. That's what a mangrove is. Bad angles. Do I look better like this? And again, I know this video has been a bit ranty. Hopefully you've sort of learned something. I just am super passionate about this and it's cost me 500 quid. <laughs>
That's something I'm not even going to use purely because I want mangroves to do so well. If there's any clips of the mangrove, it'll be now. Let me know what you think. See you in the next one. So this is what an adult mangrove looks like. We had her out earlier for a run, but the, we didn't film. So she's not as energetic as she normally is. Just as a little bonus for you guys at the end of the video, my beloved girl Mango. She's around five, six years old. Look at the muscle that this lizard has. Come on. She's around five, six years old. She's laying eggs for me regularly. She's just laid six eggs um, in my last video, or well, last video that isn't a podcast. Three of which look like they could be part of her. But you see the taper, she's nice and skinny. She's nice and thin. She's active, she's energetic. She's a bit crazy. This is what a mangrove is. She's, she's roughly around two and a half-ish foot. She might be closer to three nowadays getting all defensive at me um but yeah i don't touch her i don't mess with her i don't this is my interaction with mango i get her out and i get to play with her when she runs around for food that's it i don't hold her i don't moddy cuddle her i don't cuddle her i don't need to do any of that sort of stuff with her come on i'll get her to come out and run around for food like i say she was fed earlier so she's not as energetic as she normally is come on you We're gonna feel brave. Come on. <laughs> okay. Wait. Oh, she nearly had the electrics. So, as promised, there is a mangrove out. As you can see, the size of the mangrove, it's a very small one. So, this is our little mangrove. Looking incredibly scared. And there you go. There's finally a mangrove in the mangrove video. Chilling out on the back wall there, making use of the vertical space. That will conclude this video. <laughs> Good job, Spec. I think I can appreciate how stunning they are, though. Absolutely amazing. Now I'm just going to back away, leave them be, and not touch it. And that's it done. It's not run away. It's completely petrified you can see its eyes are fixated and its tongue's not going so it's petrified this isn't like oh well it's staying out like it's clearly scared you can tell it's scared so i'm just gonna leave it be back away and that's that and this is again why we want to use climbable walls this little mangrove again i'm scaring it by doing this people should associate this with tameness but it's not tongue flicking, it's not moving, it's frozen dead still, this is fear, so I won't overstay my welcome. And that cockroach has grown. recently. That's a big old cockroach. But yeah, I'm lucky to see this because normally I'm still at work, but I'm off at the moment. So.